it feels good to be a chap. Treating ladies with... How did I find chapism? In the 90s, I was in, in a sort of hip-hop band called the Schooner Boys. We were together for about 12 years. We played one gig, which was the last thing we ever did. But we made a few films. There were a bit sort of like the monkeys or something like that. I kind of refer to us as a dandy punk band. So we would sing lots of songs about quaffing sherry, but sort of, there was sort of sherry and ultraviolence seemed to be a thing. It was sort of clockwork orange meets Noel Coward. So I'd always been interested in that sort of aspect of things. And I'd always liked old, you know, Carry On films and Tony Hancock. A friend of mine in Paris, weirdly enough, told me about the Chap magazine in very early 2000s. And I thought, this sounds brilliant. And he was doing some kind of slightly Victorian hip hop thing as well. And I think I was at that stage when I was looking for an excuse to dress better anyway. I think I wanted, I kind of wanted to look like that, but you have to give yourself an excuse to do it. And I remember, but yes, I was in the, the pub one day with some friends and I'd already tried to introduce the thing called Suit Autumn, which was as in, if we were going to the pub in the autumn, we had to wear suits. And I think I was the only one that actually did it, but I decided that that was a rule, so that I was going to do that. And um, yeah, the whole idea of, Chap Hop and Mr B just came to me in the pub in a way and I said, right, I'm going to do this. It's going to be, it's going to be Chap Hop, it's going to be Mr B the Gentleman Rhymer. And it was a sort of culmination of lots of other things I'd done before. I mean, Brits have always been good at fashion, really. I mean, it's, you know, if you look at high fashion, it's always, you know, New York, London, Paris and Milan or what have you. So it's always there or thereabouts. Obviously, the 80s, everyone was dressing up and being sort of glam and what have you. And the 90s, everything's a reaction to the previous era, really. So in the 90s, everyone was just, you know, plaid and jeans and the pops, you know, your, the people you follow, the musicians you follow tended to be dressed down as well. And I do, you know, I wasn't particularly angry about that or anything like that. I just thought, oh, it's time for a change, really. Personally, for me, as soon as I, I think I remember buying the first suit I'd bought for a long time, probably, you know, about 2000 or so, and just putting it on and immediately feeling just feeling better. I felt like I was stood taller and it just changed the way I felt myself. And that was probably the main thing for me. Just suddenly feeling, oh, just interesting. Also, you know, living in Brighton, it's easy enough to look like this and have no one bat an eyelid. But, you know, certainly touring around the country, you know, and, you know, if you're having a wander around Leeds city centre, you get a lot of, you know, comments and things like that. But generally speaking, though, everyone's I've never had hassle for the way I look at all. People are always, you know, they'll make a comment, but it's usually a nice comment, or like, yeah, I like your tash or something like that. But um, generally speaking, there's not, yeah, I never get the actual hassle for it. But I think, because often it's the thing, if you did dress in a certain way, um, and certainly if you dress differently, I think a lot of people that might hassle you think, if you're brave enough to do that, then maybe, you know, let's leave them alone. Well, it depends how much into the details we wish to go. There's, as far as, you know, how I dress, there's certain rules, like you don't do the bottom button of the waistcoat up. That's just, it's just, you just don't do it. And also you don't match, you don't wear a matching tie and pocket square. They should be simpatico, as it were, but they should never match. They should work together, but never be matching, because that's just, you know, that's a faux pas. Well, I suppose it's people, you know, like David Niven and um, Jack Buchanan, who are just effortlessly stylish. I think who have we got now that is, who might be like that? It's difficult to say. There's certain people who are very, you know, particularly dandy, who... I'm trying to think of some... Actually, I've completely drawn a blank now. Not to worry. For the, for the modern worry. day. <laughs> what, me? <laughs> Let's go for that, yes. It's not ideal, is it? I mean, it's not as if... The thing is, well, there's suits and there's suits. You know, most of the people in politics just wear a kind of shiny Burtons-type suit anyway, which is not the sort of thing I'd wear. So I don't see myself... In, in a way, I don't almost see them as, as the same kind of thing that I'm wearing, the same kind of suit. It's just, you know, they have to wear this uniform. But obviously, you know, it's slovenly. But it's, it's, a deliberate, it's a deliberate act, isn't it? His whole thing's an act. He's, a, he's clowning. He's basically clowning politics and getting away with it, which uh, is an interesting thing to be happening. It's another means of damping your own personality on things. 
having the moustache. The thing with me was, with Mr B, when I first started off, I think I had a bit of a beard, when I first started doing shows, and then I'd, I'd just shave the bottom bits off, and do the show, and then it would grow back again, and then I would, you know, shave it again. And then after a while, I couldn't quite work like that, so I sort of grew the moustache. And at that, at that point, the moustache is a tricky one, because like many of these things, like, like maybe getting yourself a different hairstyle or something, or growing your hair out, you have to go through a stage when it's a bit, as you may have called, Ian Beale. That sort of bit when it just, it's just a terrible rubbish moustache and you can't do much about it. But it was certainly, as soon as it got to twirling stage, sort of everything fell into place. Sort of the way I dressed and everything just seemed to suddenly make sense as soon as the moustache twirled. This thing, you know, I picked this up at a charity shop years ago. This was in the, the Chap Hop history video. And um, I had a look at these on, on light. I mean, obviously it's, it's all slightly rotting away there. I had a look at these on, on eBay and I sort of had a look at the, whatever it was called, you know, the JVC, I don't know, whatever number it is. And they cost about five grand. It's ridiculous how much they go for now, these original sort of boom boxes. It's quite amazing. I could be a Jedi, bring the force into balance. I could go on Britain's Got Talent or I'm a celebrity. It is all over the place. It can be, I'll just I'll maybe find a little sample, like an old 1920, like a loop or something. Or I'll just come up with some chords on a ukulele. Often it's just a phrase or something a friend will say or just something I, you know, think of at the time. Let me have a look. I'm trying to I usually, you know, put in the notes what, uh, in my little notes on my phone, what certain things that pop into my head. Um, where are we? Um, what was the latest one? Yes, no, this is it. I, I, once I get started, sometimes it takes a while. Once I've done an album, it can take me a while to get going. But once I get started, I'm usually, uh, here we go, man-legging. Which is? Uh, which is, apparently, somebody mentioned it, I put a little photo up of me on holiday, and it's when you, um, put, you pose for a photo with your foot on something. You know, I tend to try as high as I possibly can and see the highest point where I can get my leg up and still maintain a uh, manly pose, perhaps. I don't know about that exactly, but something along those lines. So yeah, man-legging, so I'll come up, you know, there'll be some word or phrase that'll turn up and I'll just weave something around that. And so it can be all sorts really, yeah, just all over the place. No, not really, no, I don't think so. I'm, this is just something, this is, this is what I do. It's just how I am really.